Hey, what's happening, buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, we're gonna build a responsive design login form that eventually will hit to go full width when we get to the mobile framework and jump back to a certain size when it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and always sit in the middle of the page. And with that, let's get started. For this project, I'm using the Bootstrap 5 template, but I've also added a custom CSS, as we have to do a little extra work, especially for that responsive design. And that custom looks pretty empty. What I also have inside my folder, if I drag it over here, is I have my custom CSS. I've got an images folder with the background image we're gonna use for this project. And I also have the index.html file. We're gonna start with the index file and then we'll move our way over to our custom CSS. So down below, I'm gonna go down past the hello world. Actually, I'm gonna take out the hello world because I don't really need it at all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out hello world and I'm gonna say div class equals full width. And after that, we're gonna add a D flex, if I could spell flex properly. And then we'll add the justify content center and align items center. What these pieces are gonna do is that's gonna allow us to move our design into the middle of the page to set up our form. After this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the actual form tag and get our form designed. So I'm gonna say form and in the form, I'll make sure I'll open and close it. And back inside of form, I'm gonna say class equals rounded and add some padding to this design as well. So we'll say rounded padding dash four and then padding dash SM dash three. Reason for that is as we get a little bit bigger on our design, I can use a little less padding. As we go to the mobile framework, we're gonna add padding of four, go a little bit higher. I'm gonna say test and we'll just do a quick test. And now it's in the middle of the page. However, what I have to do is I have to create space for the vertical as well. Your design might be a little bit different, but I have to add some inside of the CSS. So in the custom CSS, I'm gonna bring in that background image. I'm gonna say HTML, and for my design, I'll add a background, and I'll say URL, and in there, it should be single dot slash images, background image, and I'm gonna say no repeat, then say center, center again for the X and Y axis and fixed so it doesn't move. We're gonna add the background size to be a cover. And now that we have that, let's refresh the page. Perfect. Now in the reboot version, it does put white inside the design for the body. So what I'm gonna do also in my design is I'm gonna say body and then background color inherit. That's gonna take it back to an empty, there it is, non-white box. The last thing I have to do is, because I notice I wrote the word full width. The full width is not by default in Bootstrap. I have to write my own full width, and for this demonstration, I'm using full width because I wanna go down to the middle of the page so in order for that to happen, what I have to do is, I also have to say full width, and I'm at a min height of this design of 100 vertical height. What that allows me to do is, it allows me to put the word test in the middle of my design. So now that I have it really built in the way where it's in the middle of the page, now I can rock and roll this form. I'm gonna go back to the custom CSS one more time because our form should be white while the rest should be inherently transparent or divide of any color. So what I'm gonna do is down below full width, I'm gonna type form and in here, I'm gonna add a background color of white and I'm also gonna add a box shadow for this design. So I'll say box shadow and I added mine at 5px, 5px, 5px and an RGBA of zero comma zero comma zero comma comma, never mind, 0.2. And that just gives me a little extra shading on my design along with a white background for the word test. 
Now I'm going to come back to later on to work with the mobile design, but let's get as much we can done in the HTML area using Bootstrap. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out and I'm going to add a label to this first top area. So I'm going to take out the word test. And I'm going to say div class equals MB-3. I just want to add some extra margin bottom to this design just to make it push a little bit away from each other. So after that, I'm going to open and close this div to make sure it did close properly. And I'll add a label for, this is going to be email address. And the class I'm going to use is a form label. Label, L-E-B-E-L. -E there we go. And I'll say email address in the label. And I'll save this file, refresh, and now I have the word email address in this design. After the label, I have to add the input. The input will be less than sign input. The type will be email. And from here, the class will be form control. And I'm going to add an ID that's going to match the word for. So I will say ID equals email address. Now mine spell with a capital A with camel case, but you can spell it however you want. Just making sure that you do spell it properly to match these up back and forth. We're also going to add an aria and we're going to say aria described by, there we go. And from there we'll say email help as in, Hey, this is the email. After that, we're going to say div ID equals email help. And after that, we'll say class equals form text. Let's do form dash text. That's better. And we'll also say we'll never share your email with anyone else. That sentence will do a couple things. When it tells people we'll never share this email address, but two, it also expands out the form to fit the space in that sentence right there. And using both a combination of padding and also margin, we have some space down below in our design but we have equidistant padding on all four sides as well. After this section, the next part I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a secondary div. So I'll say div, not div, how about div class equals MB-3, that's for margin, bottom, and then three. After this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the same style, but instead of email address, we're gonna add the password. I'm gonna say label, in this case, for password. After that, I will say class and form label. This will allow you to change your design if you want to using the label of the form label class. Close it up and we'll say password. We should see if I save this and then refresh the page, we have email address, that margin bottom for our nice spacing in there. We'll also have a margin bottom as well for our password. After this, we're gonna add the input type. Type equals password. And after this, we're gonna say class equals form control. And the ID should match up with the word for, so I will say password. Everything goes according to plan. What should happen is if I save and refresh, I get my email address, which is john at johndoe.com and my password, which you can't see, which is an amazing password that I have right there. The password field by default turns the characters into these little dots to hide from your showing the password. Awesome. We next want out a checkbox to say, remember me. So in this div, or I should say after the div, let's scoot back up. We'll add one more and we'll say div class equals MB dash three. And this is gonna be a form check as well. So we'll say form check in this design. The input will be type will be a checkbox. And the class will be a couple of things. The class is going to be form 
check input to keep the design with bootstrap five and the ID is going to be remember me or remember me. Then I'm going to say label class equals form check label for remember me and we'll say remember me. If I save this, what this does, if we had an actual working form, I could check this box. Now it's also useful is notice I can click the word remember me in this design because the form check is inside the parent div. That's important to have because if I didn't have that, I have to make sure I click on only this box. Email address is working, password is working, remember me is working. The last area we have to put in is the button to log in. So after this div class, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a button. So we'll say button and the type will be a submit button. Type will be submit button, there we go. And the class will be BTN for the button and BTN primary for the classic blue button design. Let's close it up and we'll say log in. And apparently I spelled button with B-U-T-T, -T, so that's really not gonna work. Let's fix that. There we go, refresh the page. Now we have the login and it's looking pretty good. If I move this site around, it sits in the middle of the page, the background grows and shrinks, but if we look at it, it doesn't quite fit the mobile design perfectly. We did notice that due to this different padding from padding four to padding three, that it does increase and decrease a slight bit when it comes to the padding. However, what I want to do is on the mobile framework, I want the biggest space possible for someone to type in. So I'm going to go into my CSS and add a media query. Let's get this back in order. So I'll bring it up here for right now. Actually, I'll bring it right to this corner. And then I'll do inspect and we'll do the mobile framework. And just since we're a little smaller on the screen, we're going to make this a lot bigger in a little bit. So hang tight for just a second. In fact, let's do this. Let's actually move this and this around. So we're a little bit on the mobile side. Now we're looking a lot better. All right, let's pull him and him down. And now what we'll do is we'll go adjust to window. That's so much better with the mobile framework. Awesome. So now that we're in the CSS file, what I want to do is I want to write a media query. So it changes once it gets below a certain size, I'm going to say at media and I'm going to say the max width for this to not work max width. This is per bootstraps media query recommendation is 575.98 pixels, essentially 576 and higher. Don't do this. I'm then going to open and close this media query and I'm going to use the form and adjust the width to 100%. So we'll say 100% when it hits this size. And now when I save this and refresh the page, this design goes full width essentially at 100% when it hits the mobile frame environment. We look at it from responsive design. I'm going to go back out and we'll move our browser around one more time. And what I'm going to get is of course, this is going to sit in the middle of my design. And when I go to the mobile frame environment, we'll eventually hit, as you can see, it snaps across the page. And this is how I can use the mobile frame for the biggest fields possible on a mobile device. If you want more help with Bootstrap 5 in general, I have an entire playlist dedicated to just Bootstrap 5. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.